So, we are looking at the effect of uh, the alloying elements, particularly silicon and aluminum uh, on the, uh, the, uh, the evolution of microstructures. So, if you look at uh, the sequence of microstructural formation in, in, uh, in, in steels, the first reaction you would expect to uh, see um, even uh, much before the solidification uh, is started, see inclusion formation. So, if you look at the first reaction that happens uh, in an uh, uh, in the microstructure evolution is uh, the inclusion formation and the inclusion uh, uh, forms much higher temperature than the solidification uh, in a liquid regions especially if you have an oxidizing elements such as an silicon aluminum you readily oxidize the uh, these elements uh, in a liquid stage and uh, you form the oxides of aluminum and uh, silicon and subsequently when you cool down uh, the upon reaching the uh, uh, solidification uh, start temperatures so you will uh, uh, nucleate uh, delta ferrite uh, in, uh, in, uh, in steels in even in advanced size in steels uh, in a conventional advanced size in steels like in a dpn trip when you will solidify uh, uh, first into delta ferrite and subsequently um, the alloying elements either can go to liquid or uh, uh, can even partition towards delta ferrite and uh, um, in uh, especially in aluminum and other elements so will try to uh, partition towards liquid and subsequently and uh, solidification completes you know it becomes uh, it undergoes uh, during uh, uh, solidification based on the carbon concentration uh, peritactic reaction and then uh, and, uh, fully oxidic uh, microstructure develops and subsequently you know uh, the based on the cooling rates oxidant can either transform to um, uh, low temperature products. Um, or even uh, martensitic based on the cooling rates. So, so in this reaction if you look at it the first rate controlling uh, reaction for subsequent microstructure evolution is the inclusion formation. So, inclusion uh, can be engineered, formation can be engineered uh, uh, to our favor. Uh, uh, so, uh, for example, you know, if you have an, uh, 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 the size controlled uh, the inclusion that are formed. And the inclusions are all also uh, act as a potential nucleation sites for these, the, uh, sub, the subsequent uh, phase transformation uh, from austenite to room temperature. Uh, for example, the acicular ferrite is known to nucleate on the inclusions, uh, non metallic inclusions present in the microstructure. So, if you carefully control the, the inclusion density, its size and volume fraction, and we may also promote the nucleation of acicular ferrite. Uh, when uh, the austenite is cooling to room temperature, uh, the, the nucleation of acicular ferrite uh, uh, is uh, seen as an uh, 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 advantage, yes, because acicular ferrite gives the, the best uh, uh, the tough end microstructure in terms of properties, having an acicular ferritic microstructure is beneficial uh, instead of having a an, an fully martensitic microstructure. So, by carefully manipulating the size and volume fraction, and we can also change the uh, new, uh, uh, the microstructure formation uh, when the austenite uh, uh, it transforms to uh, any other uh, low temperature products um, uh, during cooling. So the the understanding nucleation uh, uh, formation mechanism is very important um, uh, uh, to uh, to control the the microstructure at subsequent uh, cooling to room temperature. And if you look at an, uh, an uh, uh, inclusion formation mechanism. Uh, the as I said, the first reaction that happens uh, when uh, sol well pool solidifies uh, 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 inclusion formation. Um, so inclusion uh, can have, can form at uh, um, very high temperatures. So when you expose the liquid pool to atmosphere uh, or uh, the uh, even uh, shielding gas, if it con con contains um, the, uh, the contamination from oxygen, and you uh, the uh, elements like aluminium silicon can readily combine uh, and then form oxides. And these oxides um, can trap the alloying elements uh, uh, in the liquid uh, onto the surface. For example, if you look at in a typical inclusion in uh, advanced ice and steel, what you see over here is the uh, uh, globular uh, oxide inclusion. So, in this case, um, uh, so, so, the, uh, so this steel, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, it is in a silicon based inclusion. Uh, sil silicon based strip seal, uh, uh, so the SiO2 silicon oxide for example. So, once you have an oxide formed, uh, the other alloying elements like you know, manganese uh, uh, and uh, the sulphur, they are all getting uh, uh, trapped at the surface of the inclusions, wherein uh, you have an uh, epitaxial enrichment of uh, these alloying elements like for example, manganese silicon would go and enrich these surfaces and you will end up forming. Uh, 
the layers of uh, uh, non metallic inclusions uh, where uh, the oxides at the center and then uh, because of the epitaxial enrichment of other elements you will end up forming silicon oxide, manganese sulfide uh, and uh, so on so forth in the subsequent uh, uh, cooling. And uh, you see in, in various morphologies based on the uh, uh, temperature also forming. So, you have an, uh, an invariably at the middle you have uh, uh, oxides of silicon aluminum and then an epitaxial enrichment of uh, the other inclusions uh, uh, that are formed uh, in and around uh, the oxide inclusions. And if you look at the, the elemental mapping, uh, it can it can be very clear. So, if you look at uh, the distribution of volatile elements in the middle, so this is the oxide. So, in this case, in a trip, silicon based trip steel, uh, at the middle you have an enrichment of silicon, and uh, so you will have a uh, uh, silicon peak. And subsequently, uh, once you have a silicon oxide formed, and it traps the, um, the, uh, the elements like manganese and sulphur. And then you will have an, uh, uh, manganese sulphide forming and surrounding uh, the, the oxide that forms at higher temperature. Uh, and uh, so you will have a uh, typical uh, non metallic inclusion containing uh, silicon oxide at the, uh, the uh, center and then manganese sulphide surrounding the uh, silicon oxide. So, same you may find it in uh, aluminum based uh, trip steel as well. Uh, again, uh, aluminum oxide forms even higher temperature than silicon oxide, and uh, you will have an uh, uh, aluminum oxide formed, and subsequently, you will have an enrichment of uh, um, silicon and aluminum oxide. Then, you will have an uh, silicon oxide surrounding the aluminum oxide, and subsequently, you will have a manganese and sulfur uh, enriching uh, these oxides and forming a, a complex uh, non metallic inclusions. So, the mechanism of inclusion formation uh, in advanced ice and steel wells, uh, it is uh, 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 yeah, it is as an uh, uh, conventional inclusion formation, you will have an uh, first uh, aluminum oxide formed. Uh, so, invariably uh, uh, in a trips uh, steel containing aluminum, so you first form an uh, uh, the uh, core of um, aluminum oxide and once you have aluminum oxide nucleation uh, uh, and then you will have an enrichment of silicon oxide, uh, enrichment of silicon leading to uh, silicon oxide formation surrounding the aluminum oxide and subsequently manganese sulfur can also enrich in uh, forming uh, manganese sulfide. Uh, so, the compl uh, inclusions uh, you know, uh, morphology uh, uh, appears complex. Um, with the presence of an uh, oxide core and then subsequent enrichment of manganese sulfur leading to a uh, complex uh, um, uh, non metallic inclusion formation in uh, in uh, an advanced ice and steel uh, well poles, uh, especially if you have uh, the highly oxidizing alloying elements like aluminum and silicon. And inclusion stability is also affected by uh, the presence of uh, uh, varying amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. So, if you have uh, uh, shielding gas when you use uh, or backing gas uh, in a GMAW or if you use an, uh, sort of an, uh, uh, yeah, cover the uh, backing gas uh, um, in uh, laser beam welding, so presence of oxygen uh, should be controlled uh, significantly. Uh, and uh, if you change the oxygen concentration uh, in, in the well regions, so your uh, um, uh, uh, the inclusion formation, uh, um, inclusion kin of form the kinetics of inclusion formation can also be changed significantly. Uh, for example, in this graph I, sh I show uh, and, uh, the weight fractions of inclusions that are commonly observed, uh, the weight percentage of inclusion that commonly observed uh, in um, uh, trip steels uh, as a function of uh, temperatures. Uh, with uh, uh, two different oxygen concentration uh, in the uh, uh, well pool when you are exposing uh, the well pool of uh, uh, aluminum containing trip steel uh, with uh, two different oxygen concentration and you will have uh, uh, so sorry this is 20 ppm and uh, uh, 30 ppm of oxygen. Uh, so, in uh, higher oxygen concentration if you have 40 ppm of oxygen. Uh, the inclusion uh, formation temperature uh, is about uh, 2100 Kelvin centigrade and subsequently uh, no, they, uh, uh, so when you cool down so obviously you tend to form more uh, volume fraction of volume uh, oxide inclusions uh, and you end up having an uh, 0.008 percent 
of inclusions. So, if you increase if you decrease the oxygen concentration obviously the amount of non-metallic inclusions uh, you form it is also decreases and uh, subsequently when you cool down uh, uh, because of uh, an entrapment of manganese and sulphur in the inclusions uh, oxygen inclusions you will also have uh, manganese sulphide uh, formed uh, and the uh, yeah, manganese, formation of manganese sulphide is not influenced by oxygen. Uh, so, the oxygen would severely affect the, uh, the uh, volume fraction of oxygen inclusions uh, uh, that are present uh, in the well pool. Uh, similarly, the same uh, behavior can be also be observed um, in uh, uh, silicon based uh, uh, trip steel. Uh, so, if you increase the, uh, the oxygen concentration uh, um, uh, present in the uh, uh, pool uh, to react with the silicon in the uh, liquid metal and you may also change the, the, uh, the inclusion volume fraction as well as the kinetics of inclusion formation. Um, so, if you have a higher amount of oxygen uh, you may also have a more volume fraction of in uh, silicon oxide uh, and if you decrease the oxygen concentration the inclusion concentration uh, uh, in the microstructure also decrease uh, significantly. So, the other uh, uh, effect uh, uh, what we generally see in uh, um, uh, uh, an aluminum based trip steel is the uh, partitioning of aluminum uh, to delta ferrite and this uh, uh, can be seen uh, uh, in uh, almost all the welding processes uh, when you either use a laser resistance spot welding or laser beam welding and, uh, or uh, uh, a gas metal arc welding and you see an stabilization of delta ferrite especially if you have an aluminum concentration uh, ranging uh, from uh, say 1 to 1.2 weight percent and you will have uh, a uh, distinctive uh, uh, layer of delta ferrite stabilized at the fusion boundary uh, as well as along the grain boundaries uh, when you have uh, uh, partitioning of uh, aluminum to, del uh, to delta ferrite. So, how it happens? So, this stabilization if you look at uh, uh, an elemental mapping elemental uh, analysis along the fusion boundary if you look at it in a, in a, in a trip steel uh, containing aluminum uh, the weld on the fusion boundary you would see when you have a delta ferrite stabilized at the fusion boundary you will have increased amount of uh, aluminum at uh, those regions. So, what does aluminum do uh, when uh, aluminum uh, um, is present in the pool when solidification happens. So, aluminum is the uh, 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 in this system is only alloying element which actually partitions to the delta ferrite uh, during solidification. Uh, so, if you look at this uh, the uh, graph what I show here the uh, the amount of uh, elements present in the liquid and so elements and phases present in the liquid as a function of temperature. So, if you look at uh, carbon uh, so even uh, starting from uh, the temperature of uh, 2200 degree centigrade. Uh, the carbon is in the liquid present and the moment uh, you have a solidification uh, then what happens carbon? Carbon tend to go to liquid and uh, segregate liquid. That means that when you have a delta ferrite solidifying liquid and delta ferrite uh, uh, sends the carbon or uh, the partitions the carbon to the liquid and because of that you have an enrichment in carbon in liquid. Right? And similarly, the manganese also have a similar uh, partitioning behavior and silicon as well and uh, partition to liquid. Uh, whereas, in aluminum uh, it has an uh, uh, opposite uh, partitioning behavior compared to carbon, silicon and manganese. So, aluminum partitioned towards delta ferrite that means that uh, liquid is depleted in aluminum. Okay? So, the aluminum is segregates to the delta ferrite. and uh, and because of that uh, now once you have uh, um, uh, aluminum uh, concentration in delta ferrite increases significantly and uh, delta ferrite stabilizes uh, uh, to room temperature. So, for example, if you look at uh, uh, the maximum aluminum concentration uh, in, in ferrite, so it can go as high as uh, say uh, for a given 1.1 uh, bulk aluminum concentration. Okay, percent. So, when uh, uh, solidification happens and it can go as high as 1.2, 1.3 in delta ferrite. So, once you have aluminum concentration goes beyond uh, 1.2 if you look at an, a conventional an iron aluminum phase diagram. So, when al aluminum concentration in uh, uh, goes above so 1.2 
uh, and you stabilize uh, ferrite. So, because of uh, the uh, partitioning of aluminum uh, to the delta ferrite, uh, when the solidification happens in aluminum based strip steel, uh, when the delta ferrite concentration uh, goes above a critical limit, let us say in the pure aluminum ion aluminum system, if it goes on more than 1.2 uh, weight percent roughly, and then uh, uh, the system, the microstructure is stabilized to a uh, single phase delta ferrite. So, that is what you clearly see uh, in the uh, aluminum containing trip steel fusion boundary. So, when the li liquid uh, solidifies into delta ferrite, so aluminum partition towards delta ferrite and uh, when the uh, delta ferrite uh, concentration uh, in aluminum reaches uh, uh, beyond uh, so 1.2 weight percent and uh, the delta ferrite cannot transform to um, austenite. So, this delta ferrite remains as an, uh, delta ferrite at room temperature even after uh, uh, cooling to room temperature. So, uh, because of that you know we have a very soft uh, the mic uh, microstructure uh, in between uh, and uh, a matasitic microstructure uh, uh, in the heat of a zone as well as in the, in the uh, rest of uh, the um, fusion boundary and uh, leading to a uh, uh, strain partitioning when you are applying uh, uh, to load. We will see in detail how uh, these delta ferrite can change the microstructure. Uh, uh, the distribution, uh, especially the distribution of retained austenite and uh, the mechanical properties of uh, the wellments because of these uh, the presence of uh, soft delta ferrite in, uh, in aluminum based strip steel. And this effect is not seen in uh, silicon based strip steel uh, because uh, silicon is not that effective in stabilizing uh, ferrite or uh, uh, in, uh, even in uh, the stabilizing in the other, other uh, microstructure phases. And because of very strong affinity for aluminum to delta ferrite. Uh, and then uh, uh, the beyond uh, say 1.2 percent, uh, uh, 8 percent uh, to 8 percent aluminum, if present in delta ferrite and delta ferrite uh, gets stabilized uh, and then it cannot transform to austenite in subsequent cooling. Uh, so, if you look at it now the complexities in, uh, in microstructure development because of these alloying elements. Uh, so, we need to now understand and the basics uh, without uh, understanding these basics and we cannot modify the well thermal cycle. So, I just showed you two examples of uh, uh, the effect of uh, the alloying elements such as silicon aluminum which are very important to stabilize retained austenite and uh, if you have these two alloying elements uh, and you already see an, a tremendous change in the, the, the distribution of microstructure in the fusion boundary in the fusion zone uh, microstructure. Um, so, we will we'll go in detail uh, how the other line elements behave uh, during uh, welding uh, and how uh, the microstructure evolves uh, in the heat affected zone uh, uh, during cooling uh, from uh, higher temperatures. Um, we will also see uh, the how we can uh, uh, favorably modify the well thermal cycles or add uh, other line elements uh, to our favor so that you know we can minimize. Uh, the damage those these aligning elements do uh, to the well microstructure. 